Thank you so much for sharing that beautiful, beautiful word. Thank you. God bless you. And let us once again look to God in prayer. Gracious God, indeed, we are so thankful and grateful for all of your many blessings and gifts to us. And we truly do worship you and glorify your holy and majestic name. Gracious God, as we turn to read your word, we ask and pray that in the power of your Holy Spirit, you would open our hearts and our minds and make us receptive to all that you would speak to us this day. And we make our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. As has been shared, this is our Pledge Sunday at the church where we celebrate the gifts that God has given to us in Christ. And we make our our pledges to the next year, our giving of time and talents and treasure, our prayers, our life together, we, we give ourselves in service to God. And so for our text today, I, I thought I would use a, a text that addressed our life together as a church. And, and the passage that I've chosen in the New Testament is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, beautiful chapter 12, portions of that chapter where Paul speaks of us as being the body of Christ. But first from the Old Testament, I'm going to read Psalm 133. And this is a beautiful little psalm that praises God and, and lifts up the blessings of being united. Psalm 133. Let us listen for God's word. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. And from the uh, 12th chapter of Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, Paul explores the image of the church being the body of Christ. Let us again listen for God's word. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, So it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we were all made to drink of the one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each of them as he chose. I mean, if all were a single member, where would the body be? And as it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, 
all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the wonderful things about the church that distinguishes it above all other kinds of groupings that we might belong to is that the church is more than just a civic club. It's more than just a social club. It's more than just a professional organization of some kind. But as Paul talks about the church, the church is an organic, living unity that has been infused by the Holy Spirit of God in Jesus Christ. The church is a body. And Jesus talked about it this way in in John's gospel. He said to his disciples, I am the vine and you are the branches. So our life together in in Christ is, is not just a mutual organization to which we have given our assent to. But indeed, we understand as Christians that the life that we share together in Jesus Christ is filled with his life. Indeed, it is his grace and his goodness that has brought us together and made us to be one body in him. And as Paul talks about and writes about the church in the letter to the Corinthians, this beautiful image that he uses with them You know, you can imagine how the Corinthians who first heard this and first were listening to this letter read read to them, probably in a worship setting, something like this, how this would have impressed them so deeply. And one of the things you discover about that congregation as you read the letter is that as Paul thinks about them and writes to them, you discover to this point that they've got some drama in their church. They've got some issues And it particularly dealt with their unity as a body. There were divisions within their body. And, you know, you think about Paul, and he's a pretty straight guy, a pretty straight shooter, and sometimes can be hard in some respects when you read him. But you might think as he's talked about the problems within the life of the church, to this point, when he says the therefore, you might think that Paul would say something like, now y'all better shape up. You know, y'all have gotten it wrong. And some of you, you know, you just just don't get it. And I think you need to get out. You You might think Paul might say something like that. But instead, as Paul comes to talk and address their issues, he uses this beautiful image that's so very positive. Every member is important. Every member is significant. Every member of the body feeds into the common life that you share together as a church. Indeed, you are the body of Christ. You are the physical representation now on the earth through which Christ is doing his work. It's a beautiful, positive image that Paul gives to them so that they could see themselves in this wonderful way. The one who might have read this letter and seen this text for the first time in the church in Corinth as they were hearing this, they might have said something like, wow, wow, we just didn't realize how special we are. We are the body of Christ. It seems to me that there's basically two fundamental ways to view life. We can either view life from a positive lens Or we can view life from a negative lens. We can focus on the good and seek to nurture that. Or we can, you know, focus on the negative and and, uh, just stay there. You know, one of the things that that we learn, I think, as we move forward life is, is when we remove our pride... When pride is out of the equation, 
We can learn something from anyone. Anyone can teach us something if we remove our pride. Now, I think I've shared this, this image before, you know, and I know we have master gardeners in the building, and, and I'm always a little hesitant to talk about agricultural matters, you know, because our master gardeners are taking notes, you know. But there's a story about a man who had a really bad lawn, and it was filled with weeds. And he asked a person who was a lawn expert, you know, what should he do? What should he do with his lawn? And the lawn expert said, well, you really have two choices. You can just kill it all and start over again, or you can focus on the grass that's present. And by focusing on the grass that's present and fertilizing and reseeding and working with what's there, you can build up your lawn and and the grass that comes will take care of the weeds pretty much by itself. Now, Master Gardeners, I don't know if that's correct, but it seemed like a, a good story to me. And it's an illustration of viewing life. Is that we can view life as all weeds and everything needs to be nuked and gotten rid of so that we can start all over again. Or we can concentrate on the good that's present and seek to nurture and foster the growth of that together. Jesus told a parable recorded in Matthew's gospel about the wheat and the weeds in the field. And the parable goes like this. A man planted wheat in his field, but... Without realizing it, a night the enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat. And the crops grew up. And then there were weeds amongst this crop of wheat. And so the farmer's servant said, shall we go out and pluck out the weeds? The farmer said, no, let them grow together and we'll sort it all out at the harvest. Now some folks think that that applies to the church. That the church is this field filled with weed and weeds. And that it's up to us to somehow think in the grace of God if we're a weed or if we're a wheat. But I think that parable applies to the world. For you all are Christians and good wheat. All, every Christian is an important part of the body of Christ. Every member, no one excluded. All of you are wheat. There's not a weed in here. And our call as Christians and as a church is to grow in the world in such a way that folks would see and experience in our lives the presence and the life and goodness of Jesus Christ. And in the field of the kingdom of God, the miraculous thing is that as Jesus works among the world and, heart, and you know, takes care of us as wheat, the miraculous thing is he turns the wheat into weeds into wheat also. It's the way Jesus works. He doesn't pluck out the weeds. He just changes them, transforms them to something that bears fruit, just like he did for each and every one of us. You are, Paul said, the body of Christ. Never forget who you are. You are the body of Christ. Now, if we think about Jesus' life when he was in the body walking around on earth, we can think about how he used his body when he was walking the earth. And from that, we can think about how we as a church and as Christians could be engaged in in the ministry of his body. Now, think about it. Now, Jesus was walking along the Sea of Galilee and saw some fishermen. He saw some fishermen. And... um, Instead of saying something to himself like, ah, well, it's just a, bunch of, just a bunch of fishermen. I can't use this crew. I need to go find something that's a little bit more refined. Yeah. But no, he saw these fishermen. He saw something in them that they didn't see in themselves. And he said, I'm going to use you and transform your lives so that you can now become fishers of people. Now, we see now with the eyes of Christ, and Paul says that in another place, we no longer see anyone from a human point of view. Instead, we see the world through the eyes of Christ, and we look for the presence of wheat in every single person that we might nurture and nourish that. We see now through his eyes. There's another story in the Gospels where Jesus reached out his hand and touched someone who had the disease of leprosy. 
Nobody did that in Jesus' day. Reached out and touched someone who had that disease. And it's a picture of how Jesus uses his church to go into places where other people won't go. To reach out in love and grace and goodness and forgiveness for folks who are on the margin, who are on the edge. And we as the body of Christ seek even to reach out and touch those whom everyone else has forgotten. Jesus took up a scroll in the synagogue and read from the prophet Isaiah. And that's a good picture for the church and for every Christian to be thinking about taking up God's word, reading it, studying it, thinking about it, reflecting on it, sharing it. And one of the things in the, in the Gospels that is particularly helpful today, I think, with preschool Sunday is that there were times when parents wanted to bring their children to Jesus. And the disciples tried to keep the parents from doing that. And Jesus' voice rang out and said, no, stop it. Let the children come to me. Don't hinder them. Let them come to me. And the scripture says, (coughs) Jesus took them up in his arms and blessed them. And our preschool is an illustration of how this church through the decades, has sought to answer that word and to be the body of Christ in that special way. At the first of the week, I was in a hospital waiting room, Parkview, and I was just there waiting for a procedure for someone to finish up. And you know how it is when you're in the hospital waiting room for the operating room? It's a little community forms, you know? start talking to each other and sharing about things and <clears throat> there was a lady on the phone and she was trying to get plane tickets to go to Ohio so of course that perked my interest you know and I asked her are you from Ohio and no it was a long story and <clears throat> military situation etc and, and uh, she said what do you do and I said well I'm a pastor she's in her 30s this lady at least and uh, she said, where are you a pastor? So I'm a pastor at Spring Valley Presbyterian Church. And her eyes just lit up and she said, I went to preschool when I was a child. <laughs> <laughs> and it happens. I, I meet people out in the city. They've gone to preschool here. They're a lot younger than me, but they're adults now, you know. And, um, and she told me that she doesn't live on this side of town, but friends she talks to on this side of town, she tells them, yeah, you you need to check out Spring Valley's preschool. It's great. You know, and it is. It's wonderful. Our teachers, our parents, administrators. <coughs> it's a wonderful way that our church has been the body of Christ. I mean, we're nationwide now. You know, the word about us goes out everywhere. Bill, thank you. You're a mind reader, you know. Thank you, sir. How appropriate. <laughs> Fox Music House, you know. Oh, golly. Other ways Jesus used his body. (laughs) He took a towel, girded his waist, and washed his disciples' feet. And we follow him in love and service in that way. He carried his cross to the edge of town. They laid his dead body in a tomb. But on the third day, that body walked out of that tomb resurrected. And that's our life. Our life is not just another civic organization or anything like that, but our life is infused with the resurrected life of Jesus Christ. That's what animates us. That's what draws us and brings us together. So we give thanks. We give thanks this day that we can be the body of Christ in this time, in this place. We can give thanks that that we as a church can be those who feed the hungry, which we are doing. (coughs) To clothe those who don't have clothes, which we continually do. To visit those who are sick, which our church continually does. To visit those and reach out to those who are in prison, which you are doing. We give thanks this day for the life of this church, for the life that we share together. We celebrate what God has done for us through the decades, 
and we look ahead with confidence and thanksgiving and hope to the life that will unfold in and through us in 2019. Indeed, we are truly thankful for you are the body of Christ, individually members of him. In Jesus' name, amen.